Hey guys, it's the Michael Symbiote, and today we're going to be doing a video tutorial on how to make mushroom uh, extract or alcohol tincture uh, with green spawn. Um, we got this uh, recipe or um, instruction tech, whatever you want to call it, from Trad Cotter's book, Organic Mushroom Farming and Micro Remediation. Uh, for this tech, you're going to need a little bit of sterility. Um, you could do this in a glove box, but for our demonstration purposes, we're going to be utilizing our flow hood here. Um, so yes, uh, we have this GLFP. This is the Ganoderma lingi from Fungi Perfecti. It's marketed as a Ganoderma lucidum, but it's also marketed as an Asian variety. And I have some friends that have done gene sequencing, and it turns out this is a Ganoderma lingi. Um, very, very popular, uh, very medicinal uh, strain. Uh, often uh, uh, labeled as Ganoderma uh, lucidum. Uh, many, many Ganoderma species are often labeled as Ganoderma lucidum, uh, but Ganoderma lucidum is a, a European variety. Um, so yeah, all that aside, uh, what we have here is some super colonized grain spawn. Uh, this is spawn that has just been allowed to over uh, grow and completely uh, solidify and start digesting these grains. So there's a little bit more uh, fungal body than there is actual grains. Um, when you're going to be uh, utilizing grains to transfer to sawdust or transfer to more grains, you're going to want to utilize it as soon as it first uh, grows through the grains. Uh, keep it, keep it uh, eating, keep it a racehorse, as, Tr as Trad would say, um, and break it up and grow and, and send out to, to the next. But for the medicinal purposes, uh, you're going to want more of the fungal body, and you're also going to want some of these exudates, uh, which you'll see here. Uh, it's just a cocktail of enzymes and acids uh, that the mushroom is, uh, is producing uh, to digest uh, the grains here that uh, hold many, many uh, medicinal components. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the process here. Uh, we have our blender uh, that is uh, semi-sterile. We pour boiling water in here and immediately closed it up and brought it up into the flow hood. And then we also have a sterile jar that came out of the pressure cooker when we were pressure cooking this agar. This doesn't have anything to do with the uh, tutorial, but we just had that on the side here. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into this. Uh, aside from these uh, materials here, uh, you'll just need some Everclear. Uh, this is over 100 proof. Um, I can't remember what proof it is. A friend of mine gave it to me. Uh, that's why it's in this uh, olive oil bottle. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. Sorry about the video edits, the way they're not the way they used to be. Um, I, I'm not, I don't have access to the computer uh, programs like I did before uh, for editing the videos. So yeah, we're just gonna spray our hands with some alcohol. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put on a face mask. Um, the reason that you're gonna wanna be sterile when you're doing this as opposed to uh, collecting some wild foraged mushrooms out in the woods and, and uh, putting them in a jar and doing an alcohol uh, extract just like that. Um, this is a sterile culture. If there is bacteria in there, you're going to want to know uh, because you'll be extracting uh, components that you're not going to want to extract because it's not from the fungi. So you got to make sure everything's a little, uh, very sterile. Uh, you don't want to be breathing out any bacteria as you're working here. So we got our hands all nice and sterile. We're utilizing the 70% uh, percent alcohol because it evaporates a little bit slower, allowing more time for us to maneuver around uh, before our hands are completely sterile. And uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, alcohol um, sterilizes on, on evaporation. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take our jar here and we're just gonna just pop it and try and separate these grain spawn as best as we can. If it's, uh, when you're super colonizing, a lot of times it's going to be very, very uh, stuck together, especially if it's a polypore like the Rishi or uh, uh, a Garicon, the Lacrophomys officinalis, or maybe the uh, Ganoderma apollinatum or uh, Fomitopsis pinacola. Uh, pinacola. Um, so yeah, we got our grain spawn all broken up here. Uh, you can see it's coated. Uh, it's complete. The, each grain is completely encapsulated uh, with the fungus. And it's just coated in its in its metabolite, uh, metabolite uh, exudate uh, liquid. So now we got that all broken up. We're gonna go ahead and open up our. You can see it pop from the steam, the heat that was in there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up our blender piece, and we're gonna. Spray 
pretty the outside of this alcohol jar that we were just we just were uh, smacking around. Get our hands clean one more time. And we're gonna go ahead and transfer the grains from the grain jar. At this point, you will be able to smell your grains. Um, and a lot of times the grains, uh, I mean, every time you'll want the grains to smell like what the actual mushroom smells like. Uh, otherwise, you, you'll uh, note that you might have uh, some sort of contamination. So we are dropping a little bit because the, uh, the blender mouth is a little bit smaller uh, than the quart sized uh, jar mouth. That's okay, we'll clean that up later. Uh, we're still in this zero environment here, and that doesn't change when we're just because we're dropping the grains. Um, so there's a little bit left over. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Uh, we completely filled up our uh, blender piece um, to the top. So we're going to go ahead and pour in our Everclear. I'm going to make sure I spray this bottle on the outside first, uh, just in case anything was on the outside of it. I don't want to pour it uh, on there. I'm going to just go ahead now and. Uh, Fill this up with enough of this Everclear to get it, uh, get the blender moving, and get a nice, a nice slurry. All right, so I filled it about halfway uh, with the Everclear, and we're just gonna put the blender cap back on here, and we're gonna go take it downstairs to blend. So we have our grains uh, on here and the alcohol in there about halfway. We're going to go ahead and just turn on our blender and get this into a nice uh, slurry mix. Looks like a super gross mushroom milkshake. So what we do by blending is uh, actually increase the surface area by uh, separating the grains and uh, expanding the, the, the fungal tissue uh, to give it more uh, space, uh, to give it more uh, surface area where it touches the uh, alcohol. Um, so yeah, we have a nice, nice slushy slurry mix here. I'm gonna get back into the lab. So you would take a mushroom tincture um, just to keep up with your regular health. Um, it's not something, I mean, you can use it for as an adjunct therapy. I mean, some people use mushroom extract as adjunct therapies to, uh, to processes that are therapies that they're already having. Um, but you can just use a mushroom extract as a supplement, as a preventative to help you just stay healthy and uh, keep your immune system functioning properly and just keep uh, deterring all the nonsense away from you. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and spray the outside of this since we've uh, taken it outside of the flow bed area. Uh, make sure that it's nice and uh, coated in alcohol on the outside to keep it a little bit sterile. And um, look, I'm looking at the consistency here and it is a little bit more slurry than I would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it in front of the flow hood. And I'm gonna go ahead and spray the outside of this Everclear bottle again. I just add a little bit more and I'm going to shake it up uh, before I introduce it uh, into the sterile jar. Yeah, it's very pasty. Um, smells very good to me. Um, it has a very, very fungal aroma. Uh, as you can uh, uh, start to sense the uh, terpen, the terpenes and uh, triterpenes uh, as we've uh, broken open the fungal tissue. Um, those have uh, the terpenes and the triterpenes 
actually hold very, very, very powerful medicinal properties. Um, gonna get, uh, the alcohol is also going to get out some of the polysaccharides, uh, which uh, start to modulate the immune function and uh, trigger uh, different cells, uh, like your white blood cells uh, and, and, uh, and um, words slipping, my, slipping uh, right now, but they engage our cells uh, and send them out uh, and basically equip them with the tools and energy necessary to uh, enhance their function, recognizing non-self cells. Um, so this is different than most pharmaceuticals, which will go in and act on a specific bacteria, a specific virus, or some of these antibiotics will just go in and wipe out any bacteria that's alive. So uh, we're going to want to work with these uh, these uh, complex uh, fungal cocktails of, of medicine. We'll get out all that nice medicinal compounds. So we're going to go ahead and transfer uh, this slurry into a sterile jar uh, where we will let it sit for 14 days and separate uh, the uh, organic material uh, will uh, we'll go down to the sift down to the bottom and the alcohol will be up at the top. The alcohol, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, you shouldn't eat raw mushrooms or, or fungus. Uh, the fungus and the mushrooms are made up of a material called chitin, uh, which is like a chemical or a, a, a locking compound, uh, locking in the medicinal components. Uh, chitin can be broken down with heat and also can be broken down with alcohol, uh, making uh, breaking down into uh, a less complex sugars, uh, sweetening the fungus, um, but also allowing it to be digested into our bodies. So when we process this with the alcohol, it breaks down the chitin. Uh, so once uh, you have the material that's separated from the actual alcohol tincture, uh, whenever you're going to want to take a dose of the tincture, you're going to want to shake it up and get the actual grains uh, to get a more full spectrum of medicinal components. So yeah, that's it. We're just going to pour it in there and we're going to let it sit for 14 days. If you have any questions or comments, throw that down. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, share it on Facebook, Twitter, uh, your favorite mushroom, permaculture blogs, all that jazz. Um, yeah, other than that, it's been another Mycosymbiotics video. Look out for us at the Mushroom City Arts Festival and don't forget to propagate and myceliate.